Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. We would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us on Patreon, please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are continuing the discussion of some introductory concepts in statistics and econometrics, that is, different types of t-tests, and in the previous video we have already discussed the equal variance t-test that assumes that two samples are independent and that their variances are the same, or at least remarkably close to each other. And we have applied it to determining whether the economic growth rates in US, UK and China differed throughout the period from 1971 until 2019. And we had 49 year samples for US and the UK and a 40 year sample from China, starting from 1980 and ending in 2019. But we have discussed that some assumptions that the equal variance tests makes, particularly that the variances are equal, sometimes is not satisfied. So today we will discuss first of all how to detect that the assumption of equal variances is violated and second how to deal with the fact that it can sometimes be violated. What test can you apply if that's the case? And uh, quite unsurprisingly there is another t-test that is called unequal variance t-test. It is quite a bit more complicated albeit still tolerable and I'll show you how to apply it in Excel for the same case. To apply it to see whether the economic growth rates in the UK and in China are different to the economic growth rates in the US. Do some of these countries grow faster than the US or slower than the US or is the economic growth rate in the UK and China roughly the same as that is in the US? So again first we need to calculate the sample sizes counting all elements in the array, all sample elements that we have, all, all observations we are considering and it's 49 observations for both the US and the UK, and 40 observations from China, as there we have started from 1980 instead of 1971. Then we need to consider the means, so average growth rates that we will then compare, so applying the average formula to the same array with all of our observations, we get 1.82% per annum for the US, 1.86% per annum for the UK, and 8.45% for China. And already we can roughly see that, well, the economic growth rate in the UK is not that much different than that of the US and the one in China is much much higher. But is this difference statistically significant? Is it the case that the difference in economic growth rates cannot be explainable by random chance because well economic growth is a random variable. It deviates from the mean from the expected value because of many factors such as macroeconomic fluctuations, business cycles, overall political uncertainty and many many other factors. To model it we have to calculate the standard deviation, that is by how much on average does the economic growth rate deviate from its mean, from its expected value. To do that we have to apply the sample standard deviation formula as we are concerned with samples and not whole populations and applying it to the whole arrays of our data. And we see that the economic growth rate in the US is uh, on average varying by 192% per annum, 2.12% per annum for the UK and 2.68% per annum for China. And now we need to determine whether the equal variance t-test that we have applied in the last video is valid in terms of assumption violation. Is it the case that those three standard deviations and the corresponding variances can be considered the same? Well, to figure that out, we have to apply the F-test for the equality of variances. And it is concerned with calculating the respective F-stats and calculating P-values that will determine what is the probability of two variances uh, being the same and what is the probability of them being uh, different. And if they are different, if the difference in uh, variances is statistically significant, then unequal uh, variance t-test is more preferable than the equal variance t-test. So first of all, the f-stat for the first test, the first test would compare the UK to the US and the second test would compare China to the US, we need to calculate the f-stats. So the f-stat is the ratio between variances and it is the ratio of the highest of the two variances divided by the lowest of the two variances. So we can apply just that. Max of this variance, so standard deviation squared, and the variance for the US, and here we need to lock the column because it will stay the same across the two tests will apply, divided by the minimum of the same two variances. So we can just copy that across. 
and we can apply this formula and drag it for the second test as well. And we can see that the F stat for the uh, pair of US and UK is lower than that of China and the US because the difference in variances and standard deviations is much higher in the second case. Now we need to calculate the p-value and we need to calculate the p-value using the f distribution because the f stat in the Fisher test for the equality of variances, f test for the equality of variances, is following an f distribution. And the uh, f distribution can be coded in Excel as f dist right tailed, f dist rt for rt for right tailed, as we are concerned with the right hand side of the distribution because all of the f stats we'll get by applying this formula would be. Uh, one or higher, as we always divide in the larger variance by the smaller variance. So that's that's why right tailed. So we input our f stat as the x is the value of the test statistic, and then we need to input two degrees of freedom. And here the degrees of freedom are very similar. Here uh, the degrees of freedom one is the sample size for the first sample minus one and minus one again because we have reduced the number of degrees of freedom by enforcing the mean onto the sample reducing the natural variability of our random variable and the second number of the degrees of freedom is the number of observations in the second sample again we lock it because it's the us it will stay the same throughout the two tests minus one and we close the brackets and enforce this formula and we get a p-value of 24.22 percent and 1.41% in case of China. Here it means that it's relatively likely, it's 24.22% probability, that such difference between variances is occurring due to random chance. And traditionally, if p-value is uh, less than 10% or less than 5% or less than 1%, depending on your confidence interval, that is pre-selected in your study and is quite a bit of discretion researchers have uh, when applying the tests. Well, if it's lower than 10% or 5% or 1%, you can assume that the effect is statistically significant. But if it's higher than 10%, generally it is conceded that there is no statistically significant difference. And in that case, these two standard deviations and the corresponding variances can be considered equal. So for the UK and the US, the equal variance t-test is probably relatively good. But for uh, China, and the US, the F stat is quite a bit higher and the p-value is quite a bit lower. It means that this difference in standard deviations of the corresponding variances is probably too high to be explained by random chance alone, and that's why the p-value is less than 10%, even less than 5%. It's only higher than 1%, but generally most of researchers would concede that, yeah, here the variances are unequal and we have to apply the unequal variance t-test. So. For the unequal variance t-test, we also have to calculate the test-specific estimator of standard deviation, and here it would be the square root of the first variance divided by the sample size plus the second variance divided by the second sample size. And here we'll adjust our uh, estimator of variance for the test by the number of observations in each sample and by the fact that those variances are unequal so we have to weight them according to this procedure. So now we can apply this formula and see that the uh, standard deviation for the test is 0 0.50 roughly. Now we can convert the difference in average economic growth rates and the test specific standard deviation into a t-stat that will show us how far away does the result deviate from zero accounted for the natural variability of the data. So we subtract the US economic growth rate from the Chinese economic growth rate and divide it by S, the test-specific standard deviation. And we get 13.15, which is a very high t-stat. Again, the rule of thumb is that if the t-stat is higher than two, in terms of magnitude, the effect can be considered statistically significant. But to be absolutely sure, we have to calculate the number of the degrees of freedom and apply the two-tailed t-distribution to extract the p-value. So here, the number of the degrees of freedom in an unequal variance t-test is calculated using this relatively bulky formula. But don't worry, I'll guide you through that in no time. In the numerator, we would have something that is very similar to the test-specific standard deviation, albeit instead of taking the square root, you square the whole thing. So here, we can take the standard deviation of uh, Chinese economic growth rate and square it, divided by the sample size, adding the square standard deviation for the US, 
divided by the sample size and all of this parentheses should be squared and that's the numerator done. In the denominator we have our Chinese standard deviation to the fourth power divided by the product of sample size squared times sample size minus one. And the same procedure should be done for the US standard deviation as well. So to the fourth power divided by number of observations squared times number of observations minus one. And here we can close a bunch of parentheses, make sure we haven't missed any parentheses. Here again, this uh, and one minus one and then two minus one account for degrees of freedom adjustment, degrees of freedom loss, as we uh, enforce the mean into both of the samples. But we can now just enforce the formula and figure out that the number of the degrees of freedom for this test is uh, 68.7. And for the unequal variance t-test, it is perfectly fine that the number of degrees of freedom is not an integer, not a whole number. You shouldn't be much worried about it. Now we can finally calculate the p-value by applying the two-tailed t-distribution, t.dist.2t, and applying the absolute value of our t-stat as the argument of the function and the number of the degrees of freedom, we will get a p-value of roughly zero, meaning that there is almost no chance this difference between economic growth rates, this difference between means of our samples, even accounted for potential unequal variances, have occurred due to random chance alone. And we can increase the number of decimal points and see how far down the line first meaningful digits occur. Zero point, a gazillion zeros, two, three, three, two, two. Meaning that we can be absolutely certain, not absolutely, but almost absolutely certain, that the difference between US and China economic growth rates is statistically significant and indeed meaningful. And that's all there is for the unequal variance to sample t-test. Please do apply this t-test if you figure out the variances between the samples are remarkably different. But bear in mind that this test still assumes that the uh, observations in both samples, that the random variables you're investigating are independent. And it might not be the case regarding economic growth in different countries. The countries might be influenced by same global macroeconomic dynamics. So what to do if you do not believe the independence assumption is satisfied? Well, to figure it out, we'll discuss the final third t-test in the next video. But as for now, please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm making to see suggestions for any further videos you would like me to make. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and stay tuned.